African American artists and poets, Asian American artists and poets, and where did we want to do that was in this space right here. So I had another commitment the night of the opening, which was at six o'clock. So I showed up at four, because I was going to get a preview, because I knew so many people who were going to be in that exhibition. And I walked in just as a big truck drove up. And the truck was driven by Arthur Monroe. And those of us who are old enough to remember, Arthur Monroe was the registrar at the Oakland Museum and a wonderful African-American beat era artist himself who had approved the loan, even though this place did not have, obviously, the climate control. And he said, Mark, the show opens in two hours. Help me hang it. It's like, help you hang it? So it's like we quickly, Arthur and I, brought the paintings from the Oakland Museum's collection off the truck. We just kind of started driving nails and putting them up there. And then Bernice walked in and she said, Mark, what the F is going on? I said, Arthur just arrived with the truck. And she said, give me a hammer. And I said, I don't have any label information. She goes, I know every painting. Who made it? Give me a pencil. And she would just write it right on the wall, not with a label. We both left at about 6.10, and the whole show was up as everybody else was arriving. And they said, oh, that's so great how you wrote the labels right on the wall. <laughs> I remember when Public Enemy Johnny Rotten was singing in this room. I think this is a picture of Bernice in the backside of the gallery right here. So there's so much history. And when we talk about the relay, I also wanted to mention, uh, Again, my incredible gratitude to Ewa. We go back, I mean, I, I, I remember driving, I'm gonna say, tell another story, Karen Higa, to an Ewa meeting way back when, and I think it was the time that Karen was in town to speak at the De Young Museum for the With New Eyes exhibition in 1995. And at that presentation, Karen said, now we can see. If we look back at Asian American history all the way to the 19th century, it is our mirror. We can see contemporary issues reflected back more, it's 150 years of a mirror. Why did this mirror get covered over? And so now the mirror has been uncovered and it needs more polishing so we can see more and more. But today, just for a few minutes, I wanted to celebrate some of the great history because Bernice is a trailblazer. She's a trailblazer in Asian American art history and everything that she represents, community, innovation, is something that we see over and over again. But I'm gonna jump back to the 19th century to talk about some of those important artists like Lai Young on the left and Mary Tape on the right. Lai Young not only was a successful portrait artist and very successful photographer, but he wrote an incredibly impassioned statement that was read to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors called the Chinese Question from a Chinese Perspective, where he called out double standards and racism. Mary Tape challenged education policy where Chinese were kept separate. We were so happy to host at San Francisco State a Tate family reunion where we brought together her paintings, her photographs, but she will always be remembered for her activism in California education. By the 1920s, the Exclusion Act was in place and there was a new generation of Japanese American artists and together the Chinese and Japanese artists were founding their own arts organizations and coalitions like the Chinese Art Association that presented exhibitions at the De Young in the 1930s and 40s, the East-West Art Society that presented exhibitions including at the San Francisco Museum of Art, the pre precursor at SF MoMA in 1922, and stylistically incredible innovations like manga starting to appear in the 1920s. Cubism 
the most innovative artists in San Francisco in the 1920s were clearly Asian American artists. This visionary psychedelic work where figures are emerging from the cliffs and Chichen Es Chung Lee, the great Ni Honga painter, Chi Ura Obata, the great Lingnan style painter, Don Kingman, who became the most famous person in America before he was forgotten. And of course, there were so many important women throughout this history, and like Bernice, the women were often the people who carried the weight of the organizational structure. People like Miki Hayakawa, Eva Fong Chan. I mean, look at the look at this picture of Eva Fong Chan and Miki and uh, Stella Nanying Stella Wong, who was the secretary for the Chinese Art Association and the Chinese Revolutionary Artists Club. Uh, and then, you know, right now, if you look at the Diego Rivera show, there's a, mu there's a video, and of course it's Mini Okubo doing demonstrations uh, by his side in that fantastic yellow jumpsuit. Uh, and the WPA, so many Asian American artists were involved with the WPA until they got fired because so many of them were immigrants and so were not American citizens because they were precluded from holding citizenship until 1943 for the Chinese, 1952 for the Japanese. And of course then so much was lost during internment. I uh, went to Hayward to search for the paintings that were discarded by the city that Matsuso Borohibi had left with them for safekeeping. Uh, you know, it, it was a huge uh, purge of the artistic record Carlos talked about when he was a young man, his parents said, never speak Ilocano, they'll think you're Japanese. They encouraged, and he said he learned self-loathing because of that experience. But after the war, this incredible flowering again of uh, important artists, including dynamic women, The brilliant photographers, of course I didn't even mention the pre-war photographers of the pictorialists, which are some of California's most exciting art history ever when we did With New Eyes. Larry Rinder came and said, I think the pictorialist of the 20s is the best thing I ever saw. But post-war photographers, you know, Charles just celebrated his 100th birthday, God bless him. Uh, you know, and he's caregiving now for with Irene. Benjamin Chin, Kim Lee, Stella's husband. Uh, and then a story that is often left out is the Chinese diasporic artists. Zhang Da Chen, the most famous Chinese painter of the 20th century, lived in Carmel and Pebble Beach. Uh, Gordon Chang's own father, Zhang Shu Shi, Shu Shi Chang, uh, you know, a, a giant, uh, again, maybe the most famous. Chinese artist at the point of World War II when he's giving gifts to Franklin Roosevelt uh, is Gordon's dad. And then Yang Ling Fu, an important figure who was the first woman to be president of a art school in China, moved to San Francisco in 1936, taught at Stanford briefly, uh, became a Chinese language teacher at the Monterey Language Academy, and Abby and I went down to see her work in the collection of a Chinese-American movie star that is still waiting for discovery. And again, that diasporic artist like Zhang Da Chen, that's his El Capitan on the left. Ho Bei Ren, I just went to his 105th birthday celebration, God bless. Feng Chung Rei, uh, this generation again deserves much wider recognition. And then this abstract moment that Bernice is a part of. Gary Wu had a solo show. Yolanda is now very frail. We need to do something quickly to safeguard some of Gary's records. Saburo Hasegawa, Bernice's own teacher in the middle. Arthur Okamura, who taught at CCAC. And then, of course, after the war, we have this incredible Korean-American contribution. When I think of Ernie Kim on the right, I think of Bernice also because they were both involved in directing art centers. Ernie Kim ran the Richmond Art Center for a time. This is how people participated. And the great Filipino community, you know, it's wonderful to remember 
that Pasita Abad was at USF in 1969. What a dynamic moment. All these powerhouse Filipino Americans returning to San Francisco in 68, 69. And then the genius of Bernice Bing. And I admire her for so many reasons, but one of them is that she openly talked about the influence of Asian philosophy on her work. One was that she drew from Hasegawa, because he said, he taught her about Buddhism, and she said, for her as an Asian woman, she talked about this to me, to recognize that there was a whole other tradition that she could draw from. And then she went to study with the great calligrapher in Hangzhou, Wang Dongling, and again brought back that energy into her own paintings. And then, of course, you know, to just to end us off, you know, we saw, everybody saw the article in the New York Times that said the San Francisco art scene is dead. You know, Pace Gallery and Gagosian have left. But the truth is, San Francisco Bay Area has the deepest root of any city in the United States of Asian American art history. We are ground zero. So when you say the art scene is dead, to me, it's an absolute, like, erasure of what's really our strength. And our strength is not the market. Our strength is diversity. And our strength is this incredible contribution. Hung Liu's just passed, Li Hua Yi, Yuni Pike, Trin Min Ha. And today, you know, ceramic artists, artists of different, you know, the diversity after 1965 is so grand. So I just want to end by saying, I am so honored to be here. I'm so honored to celebrate the contribution of our friend, uh, the giant. And here she is again, standing in this building, Bernice Bing.